and welcome to Instruments of South Asia. I'm your host, Jackie Van Dinther. Well, we've got a great half hour lined up for you here. We're going to be talking this time around about Indian classical music and the instruments that go with it. And of course, we wouldn't be able to do this without the experts, but uh, later on in the show, we'll be talking about the tabla, the sitar, and of course, the harmonium. And then we'll get a chance to hear all of those instruments being played together. But as I mentioned, we do have the expert with us here. He's a musician who's been playing his entire life. His name is Neeraj Prem, and it's an honor and pleasure to have him with us here today to show us and teach us about these different instruments. Uh, as I mentioned before, Neeraj, we're gonna be talking about the sitar, which you've been playing very well uh, versed with that instrument, the harmonium, which is next to you there. Of course, the tablas that are flanking us here, but uh, you've been playing your whole life, Neeraj. How did you get involved with, with this kind of music? Well, uh, we are uh, a family of musicians. For five, uh, last five generations, we've been doing music. My father, my grandfather, they've been uh, sitar players uh, of very high caliber in India. And uh, now my son, Sergeant Prem, he's picking it up, tablas, uh, he's learning piano and sitar. Now music runs in our family, in our blood. And uh, at the age of, I think, three and a half or four years uh, when I was at that age, I just picked it up and started doing it, and boom. Uh, and you just got into it. Yep. Uh, <laughs> my brother and sister, they also get uh, greatly into music, but they have different professions. So they didn't take it up as profession. Mm -hmm. So they're not professional musicians, but I took it up as a profession. So here I am uh, when I moved uh, to Canada in 2002. Uh, since then, I've been running a music school here and been teaching, uh, doing workshops, uh, lecture You do performances as well. We, you play in and around Hamilton too, which is great. Yeah, I've played uh, Glen Gold Studios, you name it. Cable 14, of course, so many, <laughs> so many times. They've done the whole feature on uh, the music and right. me. And, and the festivals. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've played the convention centers and you name it. And I've mm -hmm. done uh, good workshops for Mohawk College and uh, McMaster oh, University, U UFT. Uh, so it's been a really good ride. It certainly has. We're inside, um, I should mention, we're inside the Hindu Temple Samaj here on 20 Road, and, and we're inside one of the rooms here on the stage uh, where many performances happen where you guys play these instruments. But uh, let's talk about the history of the harmonium and where, where this instrument originated from. Well, uh, let's, let's talk about Indian classical music. It started in... Uh, maybe first century, even in the Vedas, which are the holy text scriptures of Hindus, the music is mentioned there in a big way. But when we talk about uh, harmonium, harmonium, as you can just by the word itself, it's not a Hindi word, it's not an Indian word, it's an English word from harmonica. So it came from harmonica. But the ancestors of harmoniums are accordion which is being played in West. I was going to say, it kind of looks like an accordion. Yeah. It's see, got if you, the... Uh... If you see this, this is a bellow here. Bellow is to pump the uh, air. So if, if there is no air, there will be no sound. So you've got it, the air has to travel through it. Yeah, see, it, I'm not pumping it, so there is no sound. I'm right, so if I were to push it in. Ah, I see. So it's starting to make sense, but yeah. yeah, you're right. It does kind of, to the untrained eye, it does kind of look like an, something made out of an accordion. <laughs> exactly. It is, it is, the accordion is the ancestor of harmonium. And it is based, usually they used to use German reeds on this, uh, the instrument, but now because German reeds are uh, not available as much, so they just make and develop these reeds in India and Pakistan and Afghanistan, Can we Sri maybe Lanka. turn, just so our, our cameras yeah. can see, are we able to maybe... Yeah. Just to show, so these are called reeds? Yeah, this, this whole thing, these are all reeds. And these, if you put these up, so for instance, I'll put this up here, and mm -hmm. now if you pump, I don't even have to press it, it'll just sound. Because that thing is off, and if I put it back on, uh, it, then, it then you'll have to, to press the, 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 the button to make sound. Oh, I see. Okay. So these, okay. these wires, see, if you put, so when you're, actually pressing it here, you are making it go up. Okay. And then the, the tuners under it, with the air in it, it sound, makes that sound. Wow, that's really neat. Yeah, and uh, Acharya Shukla ji here with us mm -hmm. uh, today. He's gonna be playing, uh, playing a little demo. Yeah. Can, we, can we maybe, you know, now that we've introduced you, can you maybe just play us a, a quick little 20 second ditty, maybe? Mm -hmm.
have to get back. We'll have to get back to some of that later on. Um, but let's talk about how this harmonium figures into, as you were talking about, Indian classical yeah, so, music. Yeah, uh, so this is not an uh, Indian instrument as such, but now because India adopted this, and uh, so many years ago, see in 16th century or 15th century, what happened is that a lot of Europeans started to come in India. And with them they came their culture, their food, and their music, and their musical instruments. So accordion, harmonium, violin, these are a few of the instruments which are in Indian classical music system. Uh, in Southeast Asia, in fact, they're widely used. In Sri Lanka, they use widely mm -hmm. in uh, Carnatic music, South, oh, really? uh, South India and uh, North India, of course. So this, all these instruments like harmonium and violin, they all came with the Europeans when they were trying to come to India for trading purposes in 14th, 15th, 16th century. Wow, and, it goes back that far. Yeah, absolutely. And Do you mind if I try it? Please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Go I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm just gonna come around you here. So you're gonna have to teach me because we we're gonna have to go to break soon. But okay. um, it's, it's, uh, it's exactly like uh, piano. I was watching you. So, so you had a hand here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the key that exactly like piano is just uh, octaves are very less here. <laughs> you gotta keep. You gotta remember yeah. to do this. So you have to keep uh, pumping that. Well, that's not a classical Indian song at all. That's more take me out to the ball game or... <laughs> but harmonium is one of the most used instrument in Indian classical and Bollywood and film music and folk music. It is used as an accompanying instrument. Plus, a lot of people are now using it as a solo instrument. Like wow. Acharya Shuk Shukla Ji mm -hmm. just uh, gave us a performance on this. Yes. Uh, that was a very old song which he played. It's a very spiritual song. Raghupati Raghav Raja And we're going to leave it there while uh, Ashuk uh, Shukla plays this out. After the break, we'll have the tabla. You won't want to miss that here on Instruments of South Asia. Take it away. Raghupati Raja Welcome back to Instruments of South Asia. And well, that's exactly what you're hearing today. I'm your host, Jackie Van Dinther. And uh, today on the show, it's all about the instruments that make up Indian classical music. The wonderful tabla that Sajan was playing for us today. Very, very nice, Sajan. Thank you. And we're going to hear more from him later. But let's, uh, let's get to our expert here, our resident expert when it comes to the tabla. We have Neeraj Prem with us. And uh, Neeraj, you're going to be taking us through, I guess, the, the history of this, of this really, really cool instrument. So tell us, where does uh, the tabla fit into class, Indian classical music? Well, just as we were talking about harmonium uh, and how it developed and evolved over a period of time, tabla has the same history. The tabla, as you see here, uh, has two parts to it, two different parts. One okay. is bass, this is bass, and this is the... Not the bass? Not the bass. <laughs> That's absolutely right. <laughs> now, tabla, at one point of time, they were together as one instrument like this. Oh, they were joined like okay. this. And it was called pakhavaj or mridangam, either way. But in about 14th or 15th century, uh, it was broken into two pieces. Some people give credit to two uh, different masters who did this. But the breaking of that pakhavaj mm -hmm. created tabla. I see. And now tabla is the main or the very basic rhythm instrument of Indian classical, Indian folk, Indian film, Bollywood music. This is yeah. The, you kind of hear it everywhere. Everywhere, you cannot do Indian music or Southeast Asian music uh, without tabla. And now tabla has uh, like these are different parts of. Tabla. I was going to say, tell us what it's made of. Yeah, this is all wood here, and this is all steel or copper or aluminum either. So this is metal here for the bass drum, mm -hmm. and it is filled with copper to give it the bass sound inside. Okay. Inside it's all copper. 
Now, this is all skin. It could be goat skin or it could be any other skin. And in the center right here, it is the ink. Now, we, we have the tuning pegs here. We can tune it to any key we want to. Oh, cool. And so what is it tuned to now? It is on D. D, OK. Uh, it's tuned to the key of D. And the, so there are different sounds here. One here, okay. like right here, and then other here, and then here. Cool. So d depending on where your hand exactly. hits, uh, hits exactly. the surface. OK. Exactly. And then you can create different sounds out of it. quick hands for that. <laughs> so in 14th or 15th century, it came into being. And since then, it has been used. But then there are other percussion instruments like Dumbru, which has been again uh, mentioned in the Hindu, oldest Hindu uh, mythological text like Vedas. Uh, Dumbru is also the instrument of one of the gods of uh, Hindu mythology, like Shiva. Oh. Uh, he plays Dumbru. And, so uh, they fix these these um, these tablas. They fixture heavily in in the culture and the history well, of, of South Asia absolutely. as well. This this has been part of the Indian culture and music and traditions for the longest time. Uh, I would I would be surprised if people can uh, pinpoint what year it was invented. Oh really? No, no it's one that can. That tough. <laughs> okay. Because. At the same time, these were developed in 14th or 15th century, but then they kept evolving and they kept changing. They kept changing the shape of it, they kept changing the sound of it, mm -hmm. and they kept making it more modern and more modern. Now, uh, also the tal, the tal is a rhythm pattern. Rhythm yeah, is called there's a, a rhythm, and you wanted to show me that. Yeah, so for instance, like we have Shubham here with us. Now Shubham is also learning tabla, Sajan is also learning tabla. Okay, guys, let's let's show a 16 beat rhythm cycle on hand. Shubham, hand pe. Okay, so a 16 beat rhythm cycle goes like this: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. One, two, three. Wow. That keeps going on and on. Now this rhythm. Uh, also have the words. We have a whole language to the rhythm. It's not just numbers. We have a whole language like dha for bass, dhin for bass, ta for the female voice, ten for the female voice. So for instance, let's do it again. 16 beat rhythm cycle, teen thal. Now we'll do it in the language form, okay? Dha, dhin, dhin, dha, dha, dhin, dhin, dha. Da tin tin ta ta din din da da din. Now this will also oh, keep going on and on. So that it's is a lot what, more happening than you think. Oh, absolutely. For instance, they both will play tin tal now, and uh, that is what. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I'd love yeah. to hear. So okay. let's hear Shubhan and Sajan. One, two, Sajan. three. Start. Da din din da da din din. Da, better. Da, tin, tin, ta, ta, din, din, da. Now play faster. Da, din, din, da, da, din, din, da. So these are different tempos that right, you can right, play right. around with, right? And in between, they can do their own solo things. Play the palta. Well, we're gonna. Uh, How much practice has this little guy had? He's pretty good. Uh, Neeraj, we're going to have to leave it there, but uh, coming up after the break, we're going to hear more from the tablet and then talk about the Absolutely. sitar as well. I'm really interested in learning more about that. Thanks, guys, very much, and we'll Perfect. see you after the break. Let's hear you again, Sajid. So so so
those are definitely the unmistakable sounds of the sitar. A lot of us recognize the, the sound that's coming out of the instrument, but don't know what it is. You're watching Instruments of South Asia, and I'm your host, Jackie Van Dinter. Welcome back. Uh, we have Neeraj Prem. Neeraj giving us a little quick rendition there on the sitar. But what an incredible instrument. I mean, it's it's just beautiful to look at, first of all, and then it's, again, beautiful to listen to. Neeraj, you've been playing the sitar for for how many years now? Oh, well, I don't know. That'll, that'll describe my age if I do that. <laughs> okay. Well, we won't uh, go into that, but you have been playing this, this instrument for well, a long time. Well, yes, as I said, uh, we are traditional uh, musicians of for five generations, and now my son, Sajan, is picking it up. Now, uh, sitar has a history as well. Now, this also brought out from another instrument called veena. Veena is again mentioned in the Hindu text and Hindu Vedas, and it's an instrument of the goddess of knowledge, Saraswati. Okay. And veena is also the instrument of Lord Shiva. Now from that, they derived uh, sitar. Now sitar is made, uh, do you know Halloween? What yes. Is, what is the most popular thing about Halloween? I don't know, candy, costumes? Pumpkin. Pumpkins. <laughs> Pumpkins too, yes. Now this is, this gourd is made of pumpkin. This really? Gourd, this is all gourd here. Wow. Right here. That's really, well it kind of looks like a pumpkin, yeah. so that and makes sense. And then this is all red cedar, the wood. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, you can you have, have uh, like over here, it's a uh, wooden bridge, mm -hmm. and then here's a synthetic bridge. Okay. And that, now this bridge is the main part of the star because it creates the tone that it has. And then we have steel strings and copper strings on top of it. And how and many strings are there? Because it looks like there's a heck of a lot. Yeah, well, there's six main playing strings up there, and then 12 under it are resonating or the sympathetic strings. Okay. And uh, these are all the tuning pegs, and uh, the behind, it's all curved, so I can slide my hand uh, with ease. Because sitar, uh, we don't just go up and down, but we also have bends in it. Yeah, you I know? was noticing it, yeah. you were going kind of sideways. So, like, now, this oh. I can also do it from here. Wow, so there's, there's really so many, there's yeah. more than one way to play it, I guess. Well, this is all part of playing it. Not more than one way of playing it, but it's all part of playing it. So.